chapter 4, verse 11 to 12, it says that these are the gifts that Christ has given to the church. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors, and their responsibility is to equip the people of God to do the work of the Lord and to build up the body of Christ, the church. And so at this time, I would like you to rise to your feet and help me welcome my father in the Lord, God's servant, Pastor Chris. I'll trust you. Hills around Jerusalem, of the way. As the hills around Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds thee. So I will trust you. I cannot ever be again. As hills around Jerusalem, as hills round Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds thee. So I will. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for your presence. We pray that we will be touched again by your great power. All power belongs to God. We thank you for everyone that came this morning. May their lives be changed, never to be the same again. Come Holy Spirit, we invite you to move amongst us and to have your own way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. I want you to turn your Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9, and then also Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To you that here for the first time, let me just bring you on track. We are talking about a theme called offense. Those who are offended. Last week, we unpacked on, was last week Father's Day? Yeah, Father's Day. We unpacked a reality and a truth that the two greatest weapons of the devil against the church is offense and fornication. Fornication is something that happens often, and, but offense is the one that really works well. It really works well because offense is Satan's weapon to destroy you. Now, offense has many stages. And today I want to touch on just one of those stages. Amen. What really happens in, 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 in the world is that in this dark world we live in, Jesus Christ wants to save you. Amen? Everybody is going to hell. Except those that are saved by the blood of Jesus. Do you understand? The whole world is going to hell. Except those who receive the Son of God and His substitutional death on the cross. They will be saved. 
For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Why? So that those who believe in him, they don't have to go to hell. They can be saved. But I have to tell you a truth that once you are saved, I think almost it becomes the pastor's uh, duty or part of his mission <coughs> to keep you on this boat, this holy ship that's going to heaven. Amen? And it's a difficult job. Extremely complicated because of the forces of darkness that is working against you. And one of the saddest things for a pastor is to see that all these people that is put in the ship, the gospel ship. Have you heard about a gospel ship? Get on the gospel ship. We need to sail away. Our people fall off the ship. It's really, really, it pains a pastor. You could actually eventually show to people and say, you see now, what I've told you in the sermons is true. Through this sister's life. This backslider lying here by the wayside. You can show it and it will show how truthful and how great a pastor you were to predict it. But let me tell you the truth. It really hurts a pastor when any of his members fall by the wayside and they backslide. Because what people don't know is after salvation, we are on this journey to Canaan's fair land. Amen? But the forces of the enemy continually comes. Now the Bible makes it clear that you must resist the devil and he will flee from you. But you see, you don't know how. Say, Pastor, how must I resist the devil? Because the enemy, he comes in deceptive ways. Yeah. You won't even know it. If you know it's the devil, you can quickly resist him. Do you understand? But as the devil ni, dan sal sy ook nie weet wat om te doen nie. And so one of the deceptive methods of Satan is this one that we are discussing for the past few weeks is offense. Yeah. You think it's something that's like uh, that it's an event that occurred or some occasion, but it's a part of Satan's weaponry to destabilize you, to shake you up. And eventually to cause you to withdraw. Because nobody, nobody comes to a place where you get hurt, isn't it? If you touch a thorn, if you touch a thorn bush, you will say, I don't want to go there because it hurts there. Uh -huh. So any hurt and offense causes you, uh, it's the natural reaction to withdraw. But unbeknown to you, the withdrawal is the first step. In Satan's plan to cause you to fall off the ship and backslide and die. You were part of the group going to heaven. You see, you didn't resist the devil because it wasn't as so obvious that this work was Satan's work. It's only later in retrospect you look back, then you see, yeah, that was the devil. Then you hear things like as ek maar net geluister het. If I only listen. Yeah. You sit by the pots of regret. Regret is a good thing. But unfortunately it always comes late. Are you with me? <laughs> it comes late. But today... I trust God and I want to go into heaven with a ship full of souls. I want to appear before God and say, these few made it, Lord. In this tumultuous journey where the storms are raging and the sea is tempestuous, these few, I managed to take them over, Lord. Bearing in mind that the Bible says, narrow is the road. 
that leads to righteousness. And few, only a few will find it. Broad is the road that leads to destruction. Many shall be found on that road. May you escape this wide road of destruction. And may you be of the few that marches in. I was at the, ch- at the, at the school funeral some years ago. And a child died. Normally they called me because we were part of the school community. They called me to do a memorial service. Yes. The church was, the world was full of school children with school uniform on. And they sang, you know, how the church choir, the school choirs can sing. And those youngsters were singing, when the roll is called up yonder. <laughs> when the roll Sing, 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 you wouldn't know. When the roll is called up yonder. But they were prominent proper. The roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Hey, so it was my chance to preach. And I couldn't resist asking them, are you sure hey. that when that role is called up yonder, that you'll be there? I agree with you, the role will be called. But my question is, will you be there? They sing lekker, they skit lekker, but the reality is, will you be there? So, I give you today one of Satan's powerful strategies. It might save you. Because it comes to all of us. Remember Jesus said, offenses will come that you can't escape. He said, woe to them who bring the offense. But it will come. So you must get ready for it. Is coming. Are you with me? Today I want to talk about withdrawal. And I want to call my message the great mistake of withdrawal. It's not, a, it's not just a mistake. It's the great mistake. It is the start of the end. Are you with me? The start of the end. Because... Offense has numbers of stages. You know, just like this loyalty has the stages where you go through. You go through independence. Then you go through uh, uh, doing nothing, passivity. Then you become critical. Then you become outrightly disloyal. And then eventually you are, you are, you are executed. Now, offense has the same stages. Yeah. Offense is not just... Your, your eventual destruction comes through a number of key points. Yeah. Now, withdrawal is the first stage. And you can still return from a withdrawal. But once it moves to resentment, to bitterness, then it's very hard to return. Are you with me? The, the eight stages are before I read... Withdrawal, resentment, mistrust, malice and ill will, stubbornness, treachery, and then demonization. But I'll teach you that if God gives me the time. For today, I just want to talk about one thing. With great, the great mistake of withdrawal. Turn your Bibles quickly. We're reading Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9. Two are better than one. Hallelujah. Because they have good reward for their labor. For if they fall... <laughs> The one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. Are you hearing the, the word of God to you this morning? Ek moet in Engels lees en preek, want die mense van ander lande ook hier verstaan. Alright? 
for he has not another to help him up again. If two lie together, then they have heat, but how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Hallelujah. Turn again with me to Ephesians. No, 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 no. Not Ephesians. Uh, let me give you the scripture. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. When people come to Christ, put my pulpit there quickly. When people come to Christ in our church, I have a little booklet that I give them. Small booklet, it's called Now What? It's taken from Nemo. Did you, have, did you see the movie Nemo? It's one of the best movies. You must get it and watch it. At the end when Nemo jumps out of the boat or <laughs> jumps into the water in a little plastic bag, they are excited that they have been saved. But now... <laughs> They say, now what? The, the movie ends like that. Now what? What after this now? Where, where must we go? And how do we get out of this bag? So that little book gives you some basic instructions to remain on the boat. Amen? It says, number one, come to church regularly. It's a small book. Here, here's this little book. It's called Now What? We give it free. Maybe we must give it again to many of the backsliders. It says, number one, come to church regularly. Number two, read your Bible every day and pray every day. And number four, only four points, tell other people what happened to you. You see? Now, even as basic as that might seem, it will really, really help you to stay on the boat. If you don't do it, you see, then this evil that is swirling around you, this evil enemy that's lurking in the, in the shadows to catch you, this lion that is waiting for some prey to be isolated, is waiting for, Satan is waiting for you. Satan is, is not happy that he's going to perish alone. So he wants to take as many of us with as possible. But I resist the devil. He won't take me. Amen? And you must also resist the devil. Now, here the Bible tells you clearly, don't stay away from fellowship. Stay together. Are you with me? Then it also says in the first part I read, two is better than one. Huh? Huh? Two is better than one. Sometimes when you're married to a person, I've seen this in marriage, uh, when, when, when somebody dies. I always hear in marriage that people say, Ja, die, die vrouw is lastig. This woman, if I can just have a bit of a break from this woman. Or the wife will say, if I can have a break from this husband. That, that scripture says two is better than one. They lie together and they give warmth. Are you with me? But then oftentimes you say, Yarr, ik weet ze kan een breek krijgen. Is het die waarne? Sisters, is het die waarne? Ja. En de husband, well, I don't see it as much in the woman, but in the husband. Then surprisingly I find, when, unfortunately, when your, when your wife dies, I've heard many husbands say, ik zal niet weer trouw nie. Om een rede is, die vrouw is, is, jarre is, is last man. Are you with me? I'm telling you what I've experienced. Then I see it's not even three months. Not even three cold months. Then I say, 
Do you know why? Must I tell you why? Do you really want to know why? <laughs> because the Bible says two is better than one. So in other words, in other words, a relationship will have trouble. Are you with me? Look, Jesus, uh, Paul, he said to the, to the, 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 the men, Rather stay alone, don't marry, because you can't do the work of ministry as nice if you are married. I'm honest with you. Because you have to see to the wife, the cares of the world, your children. So you can't really. That's why when you're young, you can actually serve God better. Yeah. Once you get married, trouble comes. Paul wrote it, and Paul, is, Paul, Paul wrote by inspiration of the Holy Ghost. But that trouble is better than being alone. Do you see? It's scriptural. Because once you're alone, when you fall, there's no one to help you up. If you're lying, hey, the scout you. And the man of the duck mama's gefattet. And here the winter. And here the winter. And here the winter. Yeah, I. Sit down, sit down. I want to I wanna teach you something powerful. <clears throat> and listen carefully to me because this is... I heard, I, I hear often times of backsliders. Especially when they come from my fold. It really, it, it hurts me. To say, I've, I've warned you, I've did, I said, Lord, didn't I preach enough to these people? Didn't I warn them? Didn't I give them this, all the signs? But they still go that way. Then when the destruction comes, the disaster, then you say, but I've, I've, if, you just, if you had just listened to me. Now the first thing comes with withdrawal. And all of you listen to me carefully. There's a lot of new faces I see here. And you know we love you. We might not know you that well. We love you and we appreciate you coming here. And we want you to stay here. Because if you stay here, you become part of my responsibility. I also want to keep you on this boat so that one day when, you, when, when heaven's curtain is drawn, then you will stand before God. If you can enter there, oh, wonderful. It's better to go to the place where the worm dieth not and the fire is never quenched. So it becomes, I feel responsible for you. Do you see? Because I must give an account of you one day. I must give an account of you one day. And one of the things I realize is that I must, I must try and I continually try to tell you, don't stay away from the fellowship. Why? Is it to make me feel that I have a nice big church and I look important? No. It's because withdrawal is one of the enemy's main ways of getting you. Are you with me? One of his main ways of destroying you because it's the first step to your demonization. Withdrawal. You pull back. Or you should have come closer. That's why if, listen, you must be concerned if you are the type that just come here and nobody knows you. You must be concerned of the type that if you are just here at BMI, and the only people you really know is the family that you came with. You see? If you haven't met other people and you have not built other relationships in the church, then, then, then it's a danger. Then you are a rare target for Satan. Are you with me? Because you are living in isolation. And isolation is not God's way. God wants you to, make, to build relationships and connections. Because if you stay connected, you will prosper. Because you see, along this way, there's going to come a time when discouragement will come to you. Yeah, when bad thoughts will come to you. But because you're not connected to anyone, nobody can pick you up. Because the Bible says when one falls, another can pick him up. That's why Basil says, I knew him. We know each other for years. And it's important for me to keep the relationship. 
it's important for me that if anything happens, I must go beyond offense and say, he will still be my brother. But you see, when you get offended quickly, then you say, hey, I got hurt here. I got hurt here. And then there are many, there's many ladies like that. They don't have any friends but their family. Oh, you think, I'm going to for you. Ik wonder wanneer gaat dit mooi preek, laat ik die mensen zien maak. Ga nou ooit zo'n dag, kom. You see, it's very, very important, this thing that I'm telling you today. It will be the start of your progress or the start of your demise. Are you listening? To withdraw is to make the basic mistake in your Christian life. The basic mistake. Scripture encourages you fight to fellowship. That's why you'll see I encourage all of you that leave quickly after church. Take, after you finish your lunch and everything come back here at 2 o'clock. You see the same people who you left we are still here. Because we have a desire to be with one another and to fellowship. Yes. I was preaching in Botswana a few weeks ago and I left the meeting at 10 o'clock the night. The power of God fell in that meeting. You know, people were slain under the power and the pastor said to me, I don't know how to close the service. Let's go. Let's leave it. If we close, we might offend the Holy Spirit. Let's just leave the meeting. So the next morning, he came to pick me at the hotel because we were supposed to have breakfast together, but he was late. Then he said to me, I'm late because the service that you, we, we, the, the, the service that you did last night, the people only went home the morning at 4 o'clock. And one of the things he, 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 he told me, I never forget, he said, a revival broke loose. He said the revival, and one of the things he mentioned to me that, that, that stuck with me, he said, the people, some of them were slain under the power. Others got up, but they, they didn't want to leave. They enjoyed the fellowship. Then he said, fellowship is a sign of revival. And that thing stayed with me, you see. When there's a lot of fellowship after a church, it means there's a revival coming there. Now, you know, we've gone to many churches in the city, in this city. I've preached in many churches. Then when I say amen, the whole church is gone. The only people that's left is BMI's people standing around fellowshipping. And then they almost think like, as it's for kids, Madela. No, nothing's wrong. We're enjoying the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the fellowship of believers. You, you that ran home, you have grown cold and you don't understand the importance of the danger and the mistake of withdrawal. I tell you the truth. I mean, I'm speaking to a large group of you and I'm only encouraging you because you're on this boat that I must steer to heaven. Do you understand? What can I for God say when you man? They will not weg, they will not weg, they will not weg. So so during what you is dear. Is that so lucky? When you want to go? What is out there? It's a lion lurking out there to bite you and to kill you. That's what is out there, I can tell you. Demons where the evil is waiting for you. Friends to influence you in a negative way. But when you had to be connected to the good relationship, you were through. And it's the end of you. Hallelujah. Fight to fellowship, to meet together so that we can encourage one another. Withdrawal is the basic mistake of Christianity because it takes away the root of fellowship. I tell you, Pastor Charlie, that thing, that thing struck me. He said to me, a sign of revival is fellowship. I never thought of it like that. Then I realized, now I know why we can't leave one another. It's not that Pastor Chris is here. Some people think, no, they don't leave because Pastor Chris is here. It's not that. I believe sometimes even after I left, 
Then I find they're still here. You know what? It, it's a revival. There's a revival in this church. And what a shock if it was right here and you didn't join it. What a shock. Don't you know there's nothing in the world for you? Paul said of dear mercy, forsook me. Because he loved the present world. May you not be a dear mass. May you like the things of God. And may you love the people of God. May you love the people of God and be in a relationship. Even though sometimes the relationship has problems, it's better to be two than to be one. Are you hearing me? So, I want you after this preaching to make sure you start to meet friends in the house of God. Uh, so the day when you need someone to pick you up, there will be someone to pick you up. And I'm not talking about your brother and sister or your mother or your auntie which you came with here. I'm talking about another person who can phone you and say, Hey, I just want to share with you what I read in my quiet time in Jeremiah. Do you understand? Beautiful. Or you say, Hey, I'm feeling so down today. My husband did this and that. And then the sister will say, let me encourage you. This happened to me also. But, and then the encouragement comes. Glory to God. Are you with me? Listen to Psalm 84 verse 7. The psalm is for this church specifically, I believe, written for this church. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. Yes, this sanctuary is called Zion. So everyone here will appear before God. But how will you go from strength to strength? What has made you strong? The relationships. The connections. We have a little slogan, and I don't know why the post is not there already. Stay connected and prosper. Should be a big poster like that. Stay connected and prosper. Then another one, which is not nothing to do with the sermon, might also be a big uh, perspex, not perspex, a PVC poster. This is a hundred percent tithing church. I like that poster, but get it done. So we can have it by next week. Amen. Are you still here? Oh. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. Fellowship. Listen, if you're a new believer, you're a new Christian, fellowship is a basic Christian element. Are you with me? We now have a coffee shop. We have a fast food outlet. We have a tax shop. We have a bookshop. All these are made to make you stay long in fellowship. Are you with me? We even have, we even have sleeping car, car mattresses for people. It's for the babies, but we see sometimes big people also go lie on there. So you get stronger every time you meet together. But every step you take in withdrawal is to move you from weakness to weakness. Every step in withdrawal is to move you from weakness to weakness. Because withdrawal is the opposite of fellowship. When I see people withdraw, sometimes small offenses come. Then I quickly try to call them together because I know if that offense is left to move from withdrawal to resentment to bitterness, it can become a demonization. So I quickly go and say, hey, well, what's wrong? Why are you? Oh no, pastor, these people said, especially the young girls. You raak man. No, pastor, I heard they said, that I like this one. I hear. No, but they know gaan with the nonsense. No, they talking about me. I said, they talk about me also. But I'm here. I'm still here. You know, many pastors leave churches because of the way people speak about them. 
I showed my wife this morning a man of God who was very great. And now the enemy has attacked his ministry. And it's almost like very small now. It's almost like his impact is not there anymore. Do you people think there's no devil? One of the first things the devil wants you to believe is that it does not exist. But I'm here to tell you the devil is a liar. And the devil exists. And things don't just happen. Satan is behind many things. You have two major enemies. is Satan and your flesh. Are you with me? That's why your flesh must be crucified. The Bible says the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit. That's why in your, you must crucify your flesh and say no to worldly friends. Love not the world. Know the things of the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So what is Satan's first suggestion to you? Is withdraw from the fellowship. If you ever hear this message, be it known to you, Satan, withdraw from the fellowship. Are you hearing me? Now, let me make something clear to all of you. I don't know why I have to waste time on this, but let me do it in any case. Many people have a misconception about the things I'm teaching. We teach faithfulness, loyalty, very important. But it doesn't mean that people can't move around and people like to misconstrue and misdirect what I'm saying to suit their shortfall. Are you with me? So we're not saying that uh, you can't leave the church. If you leave the church, no, 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 no. You can, you can leave the church. Yeah. We're saying stay in good relationships. Okay? That's the key. But here's the thing. If you do leave and you say, no, I'm leaving because the Holy Spirit said I must go. And then, no, that's fine. That's fine. Then the Holy Spirit will also, we will also see over time that this was really the Holy Spirit. Because you are now a stronger Christian, a more powerful Christian. You can quote more scriptures. You can sing to the Lord. And when you see me, you hug me. There's no offense. There's no bitterness. If those things are not there, I doubt it was the Holy Spirit speaking to you. I doubt it much. I doubt it. So don't misconstrue the thing and say, Ja, hulle wil ons, ons wil jou hou hier so, want sy gaan van die bus afval, man. Ons wil jou hou hier, ons we want to keep you here, because you're going to backslide. That is why we tell you, stay faithful here, stay faithful here. Besides that, we know it's a good church, with a handsome pastor. I mean, that's besides the point. want to see you make it my child that's why we tell you stay in fellowship what I'm telling you today is important for you don't ignore me and don't disrespect me I'm telling you connect to people here because the day you're gonna need somebody I know you need somebody yes Hallelujah. Oh God, I just have one point. I brought five points, but I only have one point. So the first key I'm giving you, withdrawal is the basic mistake of Christianity. Do you have that? And what causes withdrawal? Hurts and offenses. Are you with me, Katie? Hurts and offenses. People will say things about, it's part of the devil's plan. Think it of as the devil's plan. Always know it's the devil's plan. Are you listening? Uh Uh-huh. And the Lord will really help you. Now, number two. Withdrawal is worse than if you kept the relationship. And I'm talking about good relationships now. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A relationship is better than no relationship. And if you break the law, the law will break your life. There are problems in relationships, yes we know, but there are even greater problems from isolation and withdrawal. 
Withdrawal prevents and blocks the help you could have received from someone. If someone lifted you up in the past, he will no longer do so because you withdrew from him. You will stay down because you withdrew from an important relationship. Don't look no further than the prodigal son. He went away where he had to stay. He, he withdrew from the relationship with his father. And where did he end up? He ended up with pigs, if you don't know your Bible, in Luke 15. He found him in the pigsty, eating pigs, and he said to himself, I should not have withdrawn from my father's house. I made a mistake. But he was one of the few heroes in the Bible who said that he made a mistake and went back. Today's Christian is so full of pride, he'll never say he made a mistake and come back. I don't know what the, what the backslider thinks. I have no idea. Offended people will draw from their best friends. Say amen. So your ability to keep friends and relationships is a revelation of how you have not allowed the spirit of offense to enter your life. Sisters, you can't just be cutting relationships from everybody. Are you listening to me? Forgive people and, and, and move on. Think about how long you have maintained relationships. And I'm not talking about your sub A friend who you don't see and you only send the text on now and then because you saw a, face on fa a picture on Facebook after 20 years. No, I'm talking about how long can you keep relationships. One of the things Bishop taught us was to keep that. So I try my best in the pastoral side, that's my world, to keep relationship with all pastors. I don't agree with everything they do, but that's okay. I still try to be, keep friendly relationships with all of them. Because it's very important that I must not withdraw, but that I must stay connected. Are you following me? And your relationship is here amongst your peers, your fellow brothers and sisters. Keep the relationship. Amen. It's a great sign of your maturity. How long have you kept relationship? If you have many people whom you don't flow with anymore, it reveals that offense is really working in your life. Hmm? Offended people withdraw from the church. They withdraw from relationships in the church. And sometimes even pastors withdraw from churches. Instead of flowing and chatting and relating happily, they slink away, make no comment about anything anymore. Watch out for such withdrawn people. They are offended and unless they are healed, they are going to develop into other phases of offense. Amen. Number three. Withdrawal cuts essential supplies that you need. Amen. In Ephesians 5 verse 14, the Bible says, Speaking the truth in love, we grow up in all aspects into Him who is the head, even Christ. But listen to this beautiful part. Being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part. All the brothers and sisters together in the church has something to give to you. Not only pastors teaching. You make a mistake if you think that you can, you can say, I came to sit under your teaching and I left. No, 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 no. There's more to the, to the church than just a good teaching. And Virgil that, uh, uh, dancing with you like this. There's more. There's more. There's the individual connections you must build here. Are you hearing me? So yes, I'm talking to you that ran away so quickly and you didn't speak to some people for a while. Relationships are the greatest source of input and strength of a believer. And when you withdraw, you cut yourself off from your source of power, your source of strength, and your source of wisdom. Hallelujah. 
every joint supplies. So when God, you know there's people here that God put you next to. You don't even know. The person you're sitting next to might be a divinely orchestrated seat. Tell the person I'm happy to be sitting next to you. Yes. And when the person that God sent to bless and strengthen you, when that relationship is destroyed, your weaknesses and hollowness will be revealed. Listen to this and don't forget it. When people leave churches, they were never supposed to leave. They become ghosts and phantoms of what they were called to be. You could have been much greater. And say, no, your eye kekje gaat opmaak, want sy het a boorkie by my gekry. Maar daar is net twee en drie wat in sy naam vergader. You could have been a cell group leader with more people than you have now in the backyard of your church. And I'm not talking about things I imagine. I, this eyes, this eyes. The, look into this navy blue eyes. With this navy blue eyes, what I'm telling you now, I've seen it. You were not even ordained outside. You take my ordination and you want people to call you a pastor. But you are a dangerous son and a dangerous daughter. When you leave churches, you become a ghost and a phantom of what you were supposed to be. There's a great singer in the city. He was working with Reynard Bonke. And he decided to go on his own. I think it was one of the biggest mistakes he ever made. He's now a struggling pensioner. Looking for an odd here and there. He could have traveled the world. The stages of the world. But he left a connection he should never have left. Hey! Pastor Ali was texting me late in the night. He said, I, I have arrived on the mission field you sent me to. My plane has just landed. Hey! And my Uber has collected me. And at the airport, there was a small crowd to welcome me. Imagine if he was offended from something I did to him. He would have been in Saringa Way, number 45, under the carport with his wife and his two children and his new daughter-in-law. They, they would have had a service there. It's not a lot of people, so you don't have to buy communion. You say, bring some a brood. Dan prikos het een vie vir amal. Ei, laat ek maar aangaan. Heere Jesus. O, oh, Heere Jesus. Hulle luister my podcast die mens. O, oh, Heere Jesus. The supplies. You are cut off from supplies. Last night I was watching this thing happening in Russia. I know you don't watch that stuff. You only watch here in the land. But there's a turnaround in Russia now. The Russians are fighting themselves. If you don't know. I think the prayers of the saints is working. So the Russians are fighting themselves. But I want to tell you something about a war that you don't know. We don't always think about this. You know why Germany in the Second World War, they lost the war against Russia. Adolf Hitler thought he could send these German troops to fight the Russians. He wanted to take over the whole world. Then he turned and fought Russia. But the, the problem was, Russia was far. So the journey for the soldiers was far. And you mustn't forget, soldiers have to live. They must eat. It's not just like go and fight and shoot. They need, they need bullets. They need food. They need warmth. They need shelter. And because the Russian front was too far, they, the, the Germans could not supply enough food for all the soldiers to make it to Russia. And even before they came into Russia, they were defeated because most of them died of hunger and starvation. Why? Because the supplies couldn't come there. You are in a war. Do you know you're in a war? 
You didn't know it. It's a COVID war. Satan is fighting you to take away your salvation that you came to here on the blue carpet. He's fighting you. But you need supplies. The supplies you get is from my preaching, my teaching, my podcast. But besides that, it's the brother and the sister sitting two seats away from you to help you. To help you in your time of need. isolated Christianity no. we must know you and you must mix and join hallelujah I see so many you know I stand at the back in the, I'm here early in the morning but I, I want to see you coming late because when I sit here I look to the front and I can't see and sometimes you know some of you when I meet you in the street I won't even know who you are but if you, if you, if you were to hang around when the service is over, I would have known you. I would have seen you. And my joint could supply you some extra need. Not just from my preaching, a little personal message to you. Sometimes I give a short personal message. You tell me you have this thing. I say, don't do that. Rather go there. It's simple. And that's the prophetic word from God to you. Oh, yes. I don't have to say, it's just my little wisdom to you. Brother Muni died to me. Can soon do. Lost thy job, come for the job. I've told many people, don't do that. Pastor, Os- pastor Osei, that's now the pastor of my branch in Madren. He told me he got a job in Madren, but he decided not to take it because he doesn't want to leave the fellowship here. He liked us too much. I said to him, I think you must go. I didn't even say, the Heere say, I said, I think, but my thing was also a healing geest. Because the Holy Spirit works through thoughts. And I supplied him with his knowledge. I said, I think you must go. Because if you go there, we can even start a church there. Today we have a church there. There are almost a hundred people. Powerful. They have their own kumbi. We don't even have a kumbi. Declama, declama. You're a Jesus man. You're a Jesus man. Oh, give me 10 more minutes and I'm closing. Can I have, oh, I think, can I have a, Is there anybody here that wants to hear me? There at the back, I see, I see, I see. Okay, God, let me give you two more points, two more, two or three more points. Withdrawal from relationship reveal you are divorce prone. Divorce is to cut off, to cut off. And if you can't be connected to a friend who you don't even live with, can you imagine staying with someone for many years? You are divorce prone. In other words, you have the chances of divorcing quickly. Look out for the girls who don't have any friends. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Girls who don't have any friends, they are divorce prone. Because they, they offense, the offense drove them away from their friends. Do you know how much offense you're going to get in marriage? Marriage makes women cry. I've never seen my wife cry so much before I got married than after I got married. It's also a curse. Marriage is cursed, unfortunately. You'll cry bitter tears on your pillow. <laughs> it's coming. To you that are not yet married, it's coming. Because pride is in the marriage, isn't it? Proverbs 13, 10, only by pride cometh contention. Human nature brings this evil. But with the well advised, there is wisdom. But let me leave that part and end. I'm, I'm ending. Withdrawal cuts you off from koinonia. I'm giving you a Greek word. Many Bible scholars know it, but you might have heard it for the first time. Koi 
Naunia. I'll spell it for you. K. Write it there if you can. Somebody with good computer skills. K O I coin. K O I N O N I A. Coin Naunia. Koinonia. What does it mean? It means fellowship. Are you with me? Withdrawal will cut you off from fellowship. And now, why you will know what I'm saying now? Because we use this in the benediction at the end. Because the real word that the Holy Spirit, that the Bible uses when Paul writes, he says, Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship, the koinonia. You see, the New Testament was written in Greek. Don't forget. And the Old Testament in Hebrew. So when he says fellowship, it's derived from the Greek word koinonia. But the koinonia is not only fellowship, it's also the contribution, the participation, yeah, and the influence. Acts 2 verse 41, it says, And they gladly received his word, were baptized and the same day they were added 3,000 souls then they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship steadfastly now look 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 this number you see here will not be like this tonight tonight is another gathering at six we have revival you see so not everybody is in I know I know I know I'm preaching against blocks and bricks but I still have to preach because it, some people just feel, I was not in the church for a while, it was not clear for the year I was going to do, but what am I going to do You have no idea of fellowship, of koinonia. <coughs> they continue daily. I was going to ask you, Monday to come, Tuesday to come, Tuesday to come, Tuesday to come, Tuesday to come, no, I speak to these people, daily. Daily. By refusing to withdraw there the koinonia of the apostles and the brethren. Hallelujah. What is koinonia? It speaks of partnership. So withdrawal cuts you off from partnership. Everybody say partnership. And a partnership is essential for your success. Hey! When you have a business partner, you say, hey, my money is short this month. The business partner says, okay, I'll cover now. And the same in marriage. My wife told me sometimes, Look, we must buy stuff together. Because I'm always trying to say, don't worry, put your money away, I'll buy it. You know, I'm a very nice husband. So I say, I'll buy for you. Then she says, no, no. If we put our monies together, it's not so expensive. You give half, I give half. Any big item we want to buy. That's the partnership. You see, it's better to be alone, but it's even better to have a partner. Hallelujah. You must just take a little bit of the partner's nonsense and then you continue again. Is it wonderful? Yeah. A partnership. Number two, the participation. Koinonia speaks of the participation. And withdrawal cuts you off from participation of important people in your life that are essential for your success cut you off. There's no more participation. So people who live here, I won't readily give them advice or stuff. No, 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 no. I say, go now, go now by your pastor, what you ask for our home. Brother, uh, Pastor Stevenson who died, it's on YouTube, you can see, uh, a person came to him and said, he must drive out the tickle loss. So he said, now my ek die tickle loss, I, I, I drive. Maar dit moest gegaan naar bij Kalkop kijk. Kalkop is such as you don't wear hats and jelle soos jelle, jelle is Kalkop. Ga naar bij Kalkop kijk. And even said the pastor's name. Ga naar bij broers. Ga naar. Sê, hulle moet die duivel uit drijf. Moet nie naar my toe kom nie. Sê, we moest gaan het gaan. Nou kon soek jylle van my. Jylle hoog goed op jylle dak. You hear things on your roof. Now you come to me. It's demons. Go, 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 go to the church where you're sitting. Don't fall. Don't phone me now. You have lost the partnership. You have lost the fellowship. You have lost the success, the connection. I didn't know for my mughalupi.
You have lost the communion. Hmm. Oh, what fellowship. Oh, what joy divine. Oh, the communion of the Holy Ghost. When we are together, this is communion. That's why he said, when you break the bread, call it the Holy Communion. All together in unity. The Holy Communion. Withdrawal cuts you off from the communion. You need it. And then it cuts you off from the contribution that someone makes into your life. I'm finished. Look, close. are cut off because you were through. Brother, maybe you are visiting here. You are nowhere connected. It's not biblical. You might be coming here as a prophet. I don't know from where. And you want to also see what devils are here. One day a young boy stopped me there and he came. Somebody brought him. He was a visitor. He said he wanted to show me some stuff he saw. I said, oh, oh you're a submission. Taylor, 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 Taylor. Then as, he, as I was trying to stop him, he still forced his way and he said, the, year of the Lord showed me as many devils in the church. I said, yes, it, they must be here. Because this is the place where the anointing breaks yokes. Where gaan? No, 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 I'm not going to waste my koinonia, my contribution. For you, I give my contribution. I give my partnership. I give my participation. I give my communion. And now, may that grace and that koinonia be with you. But if you withdraw, if you withdraw, you make the greatest mistake in your life. I hope what I said today has meaning to you. And you will start to make a correction. You see, it's, it's good to hear the word, but you must be a doer. Say, okay, if this is what pastor is saying, let me rather now try to make some connections with the people here. Don't just be a stranger and a visitor. I know this church is almost like a concert sometimes. But don't think of it like that. You are part of a family. And my responsibility is to get you on the ship in. That the devil is waiting to catch you. And what is his first point? Withdraw. Don't come to church next week. Don't come to church the week after. Withdrawal is the first step to destruction. I feel the anointing. Bow your heads. La mo chata le Ask the Lord to keep you amongst all this evil. Maybe I hear and you're not part of us as you, as, you, as you heard me say this morning. Maybe you don't really know Jesus in this way that I'm speaking and you have no desire for fellowship. I want to call you and pray for you. Maybe you are here, somebody invited you, but you don't know Christ and your life is not going the way you, you, you thought it should go. Today it can change. You must come and give your life to the Lord. Commit your life to God and become part of the fellowship, the koinonia. And you will see that what God had in store for you is going to come to pass. Your heads are by, your eyes are closed. Is there somebody here say, Pastor, pray for me. I really need to commit my life. I see you. I see you. I see you. Oh, so many people. Now, 
Come to me here in the front. Don't be shy. Just come. I will pray with you. Everybody stand. The whole church is standing. And that people can come quickly. Virgie and the guys, do your work. Hallelujah. Oh, how marvelous and how wonderful as my soul. The mistake. The mistake. The great mistake of Christians. And how wonderful is my Savior's love. Sing it! Oh, how marvelous! Oh, how marvelous! How wonderful! And my soul shall ever be. Oh, oh how wonderful! God, there are many of you here. I believe the Holy Spirit was speaking to you. Ah, now lift your hands and we're going to ask the Lord to make this change. Things of the Spirit cannot be understood by the natural man. It might seem very simplistic that you're just coming to the front, but something is happening that we cannot see with the naked eye. Holy Spirit, Reveal your greatness to the people. Reveal Jesus to the people. Oh, come Holy Spirit, I welcome you. I welcome you. Virgil, work with those guys on the keyboards, please. Give me the stringed instruments. The Holy Spirit is here. He's going to make Jesus real to you. It's all about Jesus. You are not coming to a man, you are coming to Jesus. I'm just a mouthpiece for Jesus. You are coming to Him. He died on the cross for you. And He wants you to be involved in His church, His fellowship. The way into the, into the ship is by being born again. And you can be born again by saying this prayer with me and you that have been born again and you've slipped a little bit say this prayer also because God is the God of the second chant the third chant the Holy Spirit is moving the Holy Spirit is moving Move, Holy Spirit, touch the people. Touch, touch, touch. Repotashata. Ah, Holy Spirit, come. Oh, Holy Spirit, move. Come, take your Take your right to this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, I come to you just as I am. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I'm sorry for the mistake of withdrawal. I'm sorry for the mistake of withdrawal. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I now come closer. I now come closer. I now come closer to fellowship. Now come closer to I come closer to be connected. I come closer to be connected. I need your supply. I need your supply. I need your resources. I need your resources. I need your guidance, Lord. I need your guidance. Lord. I need your wisdom, Lord. I need your wisdom. Lord. Please take my life. Please take my life. Lord. Change me. Change me. Wash me. Wash me. With your precious blood. With your precious blood. I turn my back. I 
on Satan. I turn my back on my old life. From today, I want to follow you, Lord. Holy Spirit, give me strength to hold on, to stay in this boat till I reach the other side. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Please write my name in the book of life. From today, from today, I'm your child. I am your child. And from today, and from today, I will have fellowship. I will have fellowship with you, with you, with my brothers, with my brothers, and my sisters. And my sisters. Regularly, regularly, because your word declares, because your word declares, two, two, is better than one. Is better than one. Two, two, is better than one. Is better than one. Uh huh.